I'm here with Elena of Leaves Eyes to talk about their upcoming new record, Myths of Fate, out March 22nd on AFM Records. Always a pleasure to talk to you about Leaves Eyes. How's things going? Yeah, uh, everything is going really great. Uh, obviously, very excited about the upcoming release. So. <laughs> and, and so should you. It's uh, if you if you don't mind me saying, I think this is the best album the band has ever released. Oh wow! Thank you so much. That really uh, is a nice thing to hear. I, I know you, every band always strives for the new record to be the best record, but this album, I honestly feel like it really delivers, and and that kind of begs the question to. Uh, did anything change from the previous albums leading up to this one that allows this record to be so complete from a design, music, sound, vocals? Like, it's just a very complete record? Um, yeah, I would say quite a lot changed, of course. Mm, one very obvious thing would be that our dear friend Toso was not in the band anymore. Um, and, you know, we released The Last Viking in 2020. So that was already <clears throat> yeah, quite a while ago. And uh, unfortunately the pandemic kind of prevented us from touring or really promoting that album properly. Uh, and there was a lot of time between uh, this record. And I think part of me thinks that we really needed this time as well. It was also things happening, yeah, obviously in the world but also in our private lives <clears throat> and um, and yet also leaving the band then. And so naturally the dynamics changes, you know, a little bit. Uh, so we were finding a little different way, at least for me it was different because I was there much more. I was involved much more in, in the process of the album, which was really nice for me, of course. Um, Jonah was sending us some great orchestrations uh, which of course are also a highlight on this album, in my opinion. Uh, and then a, a lot of ideas, a lot of songwriting together and, and, and yeah, it was just a, for me a big cooperation that maybe then resulted into something, yeah, hopefully a little bit fresh, uh, slightly new, but still leaves eyes. I didn't know Jonah was involved until yesterday. I, I mentioned how much I love the album uh, on social media, I wrote like this record is phenomenal for fans of symphonic uh, metal. Go check it out. Don't sleep on it. This is going to be one of the strongest albums this year as far as the genre is concerned. It's a really great album all around. And then he sends me a private message saying that, dude, I uh, I did I did the orchestrations on the record. And I was like, uh -huh. I had no idea. I had no idea. Well, congratulations to everybody involved. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he he was um, doing some compositions for the uh, Viking Spirit uh, documentary, and that's how we kind of got to know him more of his work. And he also <clears throat> did one song on my own band Angel Nations album, uh, a ballad. So I, I already we all knew his work, and it's you know obviously phenomenal. Yeah. So what was the inspiration, not musically, but from a lyrical standpoint, and even going into the title of the record, uh, Myths of Fate, what was the inspiration behind that part of the album? Um, well, Alex, uh, as he, he comes up with the concepts and, and, and topics usually for the albums, uh, last one was concept album, more based on the historical uh, character, Harald Hadrada, and um, a bit more into the battles and all that kind of stuff side of the Viking era. And now uh, we wanted to move a little bit away from that. It's still, of course, connected to the lives of, <clears throat> of Vikings, but it's a little bit more of the mystical, magical side of, of these sagas and, and what these people believed. And uh, there are some really interesting and great stories as always you know you i always learn so much through the albums and then uh, of course a very personal song in eternity that i i wrote that that text is uh, also from me uh so but it also blends very well into the myths of fate uh theme of the album uh, this record i felt that sound wise was perhaps one of the heavier albums that you guys have released in a very long time so how did that sound uh, work with you when it came to, to your vocals? Does that heavier backdrop help you go higher sometimes? I think it really depends on the song. Um, for me, uh, vocally, this album, uh, as I've gone through quite a turmoil with my voice over the past years, 
I wouldn't have been able to record this album, let's say two years ago. Uh, for me, it was a really, I needed this time and I'm glad I had it uh, by coincidence. So that I was able to give much more for this album. I knew it already when I started the recording process and uh, it was still, of course, pushing a lot of boundaries and, and you know, with Al Alex together, we were really finding all possibilities with the vocals and uh, I'm really happy how it turned out. So in, in terms of the heaviness, it's of course always been there, the contrast in this band of the heaviness and the female voice and of course Alex's voice as well. And I think there's a lot of variety in the songs as well. There are always heavy parts, there's also a little bit mellower parts, there's a ballad uh, and uh, yeah, maybe this little more symphonic backdrop also gives this more bombastic sound in some ways. So I think it fits really well uh, with my voice, um, but you know, uh, it's nice to do different kind of songs. With, with the, everything that you went through in this gap between the previous record and this record, uh, all the adversity going through it and then delivering an album a, as incredible as this one is from a vocal standpoint, and I'm talking about vocals alone now, does that make this album one of the most rewarding ones that you've worked with? Oh, well, thank you, first of all. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, and yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, of course, like everyone, they, you know, always want to do their best, but uh, as an artist, and, and I think that's one of the greatest parts of being an uh, artist and musician and singer or whatever, is that you always evolve and you're never really like, okay, now I reached my point and, and now I don't get any better or whatever. It's, it's, it's always a, a up and down journey and through the downs you sometimes get to a point where you feel much better which i do i feel like i i know my voice much better now i know you know how to work on things and how to uh deliver certain things better and uh i felt like okay i can now bring a little bit more on the table and give the songs what they need because also you know not everything fits each song you have to always find what works uh, knowing your voice knowing your instrument uh do, do you look at it from things that you can work on to improve or do you look at it things that you need to maintain what what, what process takes most of your time improving where you feel like you need to or maintaining the, the the strengths that you already have i think it's uh, it's both probably i mean i think part of knowing your instrument is also knowing and accepting that this is maybe not my forte and and this is something i feel like i'm quite good at and then you work everything and anything in between and and you know you get better at this thing and uh, yeah maintaining this thing and, and even getting better at that one so it's just a spectrum of things and then you always keep finding new things as well uh and my for example for me teaching has also given me really a lot uh, through the teaching and hearing so many voices and tr having to find the ways that people learn how to speak about singing the physical technique and also emotional side it's just all comes together and you keep keep evolving so it's 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 really great journey and you mentioned alex with his harsher heavier vocals on the record is it easy for you guys when you're putting the songs together to find room uh, he, he's not on a lot of tracks on this album but is it easy to find room for for him and when you find that room what are you trying to get from it what do you feel is important to have that contrast yeah, that's that's an interesting question. Um, he's always the one who he actually doesn't really push himself to be in the songs. But of course, that's part of the band. And it's it's a important dynamic also in the band to have those both. But sometimes it's really completely obvious. This part is definitely for Alex. Like it's just the music dictates it what works. And it doesn't make sense to just put growling there if it doesn't work or if it doesn't fit the song it needs to fit the purpose and also it needs to fit the storytelling so in in this case of course usually his parts 
also what he's saying in his parts it, it you know it keeps the story going uh so in some songs there's more of him and less of me and so the balance is is yeah but to to say it clearly i think it's really about the song the, the music kind of dictates it at the end it, when i was listening to this album I, i'm going to be honest i kind of wanted just you because your voice and, and this is it's not a knock on on alex it's not a knock on on the harsh mm -hmm. vocals but your vocals were so good on this album so good that i was like give me more of it i just need like more like i i haven't heard you this good on on the record like you you just sounded so free uh oh, it, it is when you listen to the album back do you do you see that you see that representation of yourself on this album that uniqueness that this album offers as far as your vocal performance is concerned? Uh, yes, I have to say that, I mean, of course, we always, well, at least me, I'm the one who always hears the things like, ah, this is still like, ah, oh, I could have done it better now or whatever, even though I don't have much on this album, I really gave my absolute all and I felt like I achieved what I wanted in all of the songs. But you know, there's always, as a perfectionist, there's always some little things. You listen to the songs maybe a little bit differently, uh, but maybe after a while when I go back, then it will disappear a bit, but now it's so fresh. Uh, but yes, I have to say that I'm, I'm very proud of this album and I, I'm, I'm happy with the result and, and it reflects of the feeling I have. So I feel so much better and I'm really glad that it's coming, coming out. This, as you said, free. So that's a really nice word to use for it. It, uh, metal in different genres have had ups and downs, sometimes more popular, sometimes less popular. When it comes to symphonic metal, the popularity of the genre has stayed very high. Like it's it's still as popular today as it was 10 years ago and even before. W when you look at a band like Leaves Eyes and, and the music that you guys create, what do you feel is the reason for fans to gravitate to the music that you make and, and stay loyal and stay with the band across so many albums? Well, I mean, I think uh, most of all, first of all, uh, the topics uh, <clears throat> that how we take people away from, let's say, the reality, uh, it, it takes you into another world of, of something. It's a bit of an escape, escaping experience, I would say, listening to the, and even musically, it has so many layers when you listen to the instrumental versions and you will hear so many other layers that's going on there it's a big big production always with with this band and uh i think this alone draws people to you know you know the quality of of the music and when it comes to symphonics i feel like that's just a you know i i have a classical background obviously so for me like the sound of a classical music and the power of it, it, it just marries so well uh, with, with, with the power of, of the other side, this harshness and, and you know, the metal band. Uh, and then putting everything on top of it, also the visuals and, uh, for example, live, how we, that's what we love to do, play live and bring this to people. So, yeah, I hope it speaks to people and, and that maybe that's the reason that they keep keep you know keep coming back and and listening to the music was there a a track on this album that uh was a little bit more uh challenging to 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 get to where you needed the track to be vocally that you had to work a little bit you had to dig a little bit deeper um yeah for sure uh maybe for quite different reasons i would say <clears throat> um Obviously, In Eternity was for me a very personal song. So I maybe had a bit more pressure going into singing it because I really wanted it to, you know, be great. <laughs> and I wanted it to be the way I had it in my mind. So I had maybe a little bit more pressure going uh, into the record booth and, and doing it. Uh, it turned out well, even though I did do some extra takes for it um even alone in the studio because i really wanted it to to, to be perfect but uh on the other hand uh for example elder spirit 
I would say it was one of the most challenging for me because I'm using kind of different type of, of side of my, my voice, which is not the one that I'm the most comfortable with. So that was a, a little bit challenging <laughs> to get, get done, but, um, but it's a good challenge and I want to improve and, and get better. So I, I think it gives a lot of versatility for the album. It was one of my favorite songs on the record. Uh, Elder Spirit. I, I thought your vocals on that track uh, separate themselves from the rest of the album. There's no other song where you sound like that. And even though the sound behind it, you know, it 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 connects well with the album. Obviously, the vocal delivery was completely different, and and that alone changed that track, and it it changed how the song comes across. I thought it was a magnificent track. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, <laughs> I, I I'm I'm using this type of uh voice more on this album but on that track it's more so it's very audible there so yeah the, you're right it probably is a little different there. And, and your voice on this album kind of gave me almost a disney princess kind of vibe like you you have this beautiful delivery that we normally see on disney musicals disney princesses so if some if, if you got asked to be cast as a disney princess on a disney movie who, who would you want to be cast as or who did you want to play or who did you want to play i should say well when i have to do i have to pick one of the princesses then <laughs> you can pick any but you can pick any any disney character that you would that you would want oh. to to play and sing and, and be part of a musical oh but this is so difficult i love disney i absolutely love and now now the, all the films are going in front of my eyes <laughs> And I'm only thinking the most funny characters, like, you know, from Lion King, Timon and Pumbaa. <laughs> so I don't think I would be a princess. I would be definitely some crazy character that gets to do all the funny stuff. <laughs> That's what I love. For, for a young girl listening to you, listening to these records, um, looking at themselves in the mirror, thinking that maybe one day that could be them, uh, what advice would you have for them? Well, I mean, I think the best way is to just believe in yourself, you know, go for it. And, and if you want to be a musician or singer, especially, then then, yeah, go for it and, and uh, be prepared to, hard, you know, work hard. Uh, but but it's also for me, for example, Along the way, I had so many people helping me, uh, and I'm definitely not here because I worked only alone. Uh, you have to do things with quality, with passion, and work hard, and then then connect with people and let them also help you. Uh, like I also let people help you help me with this record. So it's important to have the balance between. You know, you can't only have passion, it's not enough. Talent only is not enough. So it, you know, it's also a bit of a luck and, and all kinds of stuff, but it won't be a straight road. So don't give up, you know, it will be a <laughs> winding road. It will sure. be a challenging road for sure. One last yeah. question for you, because you mentioned performing live with the band, uh, you know, you didn't get a chance to do much promotion, touring shows with the previous record. You will, you will have that chance now with this one. Uh, are, are, are there any plans for you guys eventually to cross the Atlantic and come over to North America and play some shows here? Um, believe me, I've been asked this question in every interview. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've said it now that it's been asked so much that we really have to come now. I mean, it's been, of course, we planned it already and then the plans went to <laughs> toilet because of pandemic. But uh, now is the time and we will definitely, we want to make it happen. We want to come back. And uh, it's very clear that people are, ex you know, excited to have us back. And so it would be fantastic to come. Very yeah, and I think this album. is a great album to do it on. I think this album is going to open a lot of doors for you guys. It's a great record, a very complete album. Like I said, I think it's the best album you guys have ever done. It's just a phenomenal album top to bottom. And uh, Elena, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you in North America at some time. Yeah, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. And I'm so glad to hear so many nice words about the album you know so much hard work so it, it really warms my heart thank you so much it, pay, it paid off it paid off all the hard work <laughs> it paid off and yeah. your voice was exquisite like i said 
best I've ever heard you on on an album. You were uh, out of this world. It just thank you. <laughs> honestly, I was blown away by how good you were on the record and by how good the whole band was. So uh, no, thank you for uh, for gifting us this incredible album. Oh, my, absolutely my pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care. All the best.